Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about Fiverr. So Fiverr is a new large language model by Microsoft for code. Okay, so they have basically, you know, released the paper. Okay, and the weights are still not available, but they are, you know, smaller in size when we see the other competing models. Okay, for code and they are 1.3 billion parameters and also they have released 5.1 small which I reckon is 350 million okay so they have you know uh, they have basically considered a different technique you know a novel training process basically to train this model and come up with you know something which can compete with already existing large language models for code because you know we have seen over a period of time that uh, putting more parameters okay the more layers into uh, this language model that has been trained recently right this has been the basically the uh, scaling law i will say that people say okay put more parameters and you will you, your uh, large language model will be better okay but you know what 51 has you know the, the people the researchers behind 51 they have basically uh, taken a other route there and they have focused more on the better data quality or a high quality of data you know a better data model while training these uh, you know large language models they have a very novel approach and you know mainly in this video because i have done a pretty good study on this uh, research paper and i have come up with my perspective that i will explain basically and it will be pretty theoretical video guys um because you know the weights are not available Okay, for this i don't know if that is going to be on going to be an open source model and let me know if you have any information on that one uh, the availability of this model because currently it's not available and there has been some talk in the community they are discussing that this model will basically will will be available on microsoft azure okay so if you have any information related to it please let me know in the comment box but this video you know it's going to be completely theoretical i'm going to explain you know uh how they have trained this model what were what were their data strategy to come up with this high quality data and how they have created this sort of data basically and what kind of embeddings has been used on top of it what kind of classifier has been used so if you are not a theoretical savvy person i will request you not to watch this video because this video we are going to talk theoretical we are going to use our you know uh the screencast and all those things that will explain it on a board and i hope it will help you understand that how you can also come up with your research in these areas because i myself you know i'm associated with some research group we have we are we are trying to do something in this field we are also you know in the process of experimentation on a few things that i will explain you in in, in the upcoming video okay so in this video let's start on this five one so the paper name is textbooks are all you need like in 2015 or something that i think i forgot the year when the transformer was you know uh, was, was released by google i think the paper was attention is all you need okay so i really like the name as well so let's jump in so if you see here you know i am on this uh, research paper textbooks are all you need the researchers by microsoft research and here is also available here on you can find it over here the pdf you can look have a look at it and if you read, they say we introduce Fiverr, a uh, new language, large language model you know, for code, a smaller inside that I already told you, 1.3, blah, 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 and the human eval and MBPP has been the, again, the benchmark for evaluation there when you see it on that. So I let me show you guys, okay, how you can do it yourself. So there is an open source model leaderboard by Hugging Face, okay, leaderboard which is again been you know it's easier for tracking this language model so if you see here see it over here there this is by hugging face h4 open llm leaderboard you know falcon came from uh, some from uh, arabian countries if you see here's a falcon 40v they claim that they are you know uh, they are they're, they're, their open source model is the best one based on this you know uh that evaluation benchmark that we have on you know human eval and you know mbpp etc for example you can see all the listed language model the large language model the open source language model this is only for open source llm it's a leaderboard so you can find it out that falcon 40b is leading 
okay on you know truthful qa mmlu you know and all this uh, that the depth there which kind of tracks it is easier to track so if you want to use of one of these models maybe you can just click on that and it will take you to their you know repositories and space as well so maybe you can have a look at it okay and for example you know if you want to have a look at um, falcon 7b instruct that might run on a consumer gpu as well you know if you can run it on your if, if you don't have a high compute infrastructure maybe you will you will fancy running or inferencing the 7b model so you can look at it here they they, they have given you the code base etc text generation the pipeline over there and then the sequences so you can also have a look at it now let's come back on this textbooks are all you need here is a research paper and you can look at it that how this has been you know uh, they have basically code gen has been used i will explain the about the embeddings as well and the embeddings part and you can see training details and the importance of high quality data because i do believe you know i echo the thoughts here that you know we have to rely on high quality data rather than putting just you know uh, putting more trainable parameters you know i have to considering uh, those factor will not take us anywhere i will believe because you know when it reaches that stage where you don't have the that computation power in your data center what will you do at that stage how will you get all this energy i don't know if you heard about bloom by hugging face which was trained by capturing the energy from nuclear reactor you know i don't know if that's true but you know there were some discussions in the reddit community on uh, on bloom how how it was trained so i think we have to focus on some other approaches you know some d different approach of getting more accuracy and becoming better when we talk about this uh, llm based responses and that's how 51 might be the you know as a starting point here and you can see that educational value they are talking about educational value i'll explain that what it means very quickly now if you see this is the research paper you, know, you can find it the conclusion and then there's a embedding and so let's start let's understand a bit i'll, I'll explain what i am from my findings okay the findings that i have you know it will be a little theoretical as i said so i hope it's visible here yes so five one you know, so let me write it so maybe this will also help you as you know as a note five one by microsoft because you know when i was doing my study on this research paper i really loved it okay so i have made a note out of it guys you know but i will i will not uh, cover the entire notes because it will be too big of a video to you know create but just a high level overview that what are the techniques how have they come up with this model guys the architecture the data strategy everything okay on a very high level so phi one by microsoft the microsoft again and microsoft and llama it's like a war now okay on, on the uh, language models okay, sorry not llama but it's meta meta AI. so phi one by microsoft okay it's so very quickly it's a very novel training uh, process that they follow and we will discuss about this training process in details what are the steps that we have okay in this training process okay and there if i just give you this we're talking about human eval right if you will you can also find it over in a hugging face as well so the passing rate for this model okay so passing rate the passing rate you know is of 50 more than 50 percent it's around 50.6 percent on human eval okay that's what we use currently in you know guys in open source community at least to benchmark this uh, language models so or the large language models in general okay but the problem right now with 5.1 is okay, that i was expecting but it seems like this might not be an open source model i i might be wrong there but you know the weights are not available okay so if you see these weights are not available so weights are not available that's the 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 biggest i'll say the challenge right now because you know i wanted to and I, I i assume that you would also love to basically at least use this model to see how can we fine tune on our data or maybe on the our whatever code basis that we have uh, basically so this is a question that weights are not available and what should we do now on this but we'll we'll see that but the 
the here is the thing okay so high quality data of the focus the, the complete focus is on high quality data when you talk about 5 1 okay and you know this basically you know can also change the shape of scaling laws because we're talking about scaling the you know with the putting more layers and we're calling about the trainable parameters i have 40b 60b you know 70b models right so this can basically can change So this can change the you know a shape of scaling laws. But now, how? What are the training step guys? How how have they trained it? Okay, this is the question. So on the training part, okay, what are the what are the steps? What are the strategy behind you know uh, about this training process when you talk about five one? Let's start with the data we should not directly jump into the modeling part because it really plays a role here so they basically have trained on a new data set okay trained on a new data set with less than 7 billion tokens and it's really commendable to you know talk about it because then we when we talk about other LLMs, the, the, the number of tokens that they have used for at least in the training step, it was more than at least 10 billion. We talk about a lot of other models. But trained on a new data set and they have used less than 7B token. Now they, they have basically uh, divided into two steps i'll i'll cover that the first step is let me just do so the first step first step is pre training pre training on code textbook Now, this code textbook that we talk about, right, it's not a kind of an unified data, okay, uh, it is combination of multiple data sources and also they have generated some data and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that. So, what basically they have done in this case here, guys, on, you know, code textbook, this basically is a combination of stack, stack overflow, stack stack overflow and now they have generated some synthetic samples again using gpt 3.5 so you know and a lot of you know this kind of research that is happening gpt 3 3.5 has been used to you know create or generate basically this data samples and it helps you generate samples very easily okay and it saves a lot of time so basically what they have done here they have also created synthetic samples synthetic samples generation by gpt 3.5 turbo okay so by gpt 3.5 so this was the step and you know, the first step was on we talk about the data here the pre-training on code textbook so this code textbook that you see it's combination of stack, stack overflow, the codes, you know, from the stack overflow and then the synthetic sample gener generation by GPT 3.5. And I forgot the exact number, but I think it was less than, you know, 1B. Less than 1B tokens. So less than 1B tokens. Okay, this pre-train. So this is the first step, pre-training on code textbook. That's what they have done. Okay, and it has been entirely trained on a new data set. They haven't taken any data set from Hugging Face data or any, any other data set in the community that is available. Okay, they have trained on a new data set. Okay, now the next thing is, fine tuning on code exercises. So what they have done in that case, fine tuning on code exercises. So in this, they have a very small synthetic data of Python code bases, a small synthetic 
data set of python code samples so this is a two step you know on the data part so pre training on code textbook and then fine tuning on code exercises okay now i hope you got at least the idea on the data part what kind of data has been used to train 51 okay by microsoft okay which is very very you know intuitive at least for people like me who love ai right and if you come over here on this research research paper let me open the pdf by the way here okay so i'll just click on pdf and it will take me to textbooks are all you need and let me just make me let me just make it little bigger here okay you can see 7b tokens okay passes over to slightly over 50b token seen okay call 51 for it passes over table 7 followed by fine tuning on less than 200m tokens okay so you can read it over here read it over here pre train on textbook quality data both synthetically generated with gpt 3.5 so you can see as i just covered right here on this cast by gpt 3.5 data you can read that here as well and then 50.6% on human eval you know an mbpp etc right so those things are still going on here you can read that on a very high level and i will explain now i'll go to the training part guys okay uh, after this uh, but before that we'll focus on embeddings now if you come down you can just see the transformer based classifiers etc and everything and this is the this is the high educational value data over here okay define normalize and i will explain this about this that how you know techniques like rotary position embeddings because it looks at the po positions because when we talk about normalize it looks at the position of normalize okay in the training steps so we'll cover that as well so very very interesting research paper guys to to read so let's 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 move on now okay so this was on the tra uh, data part so preparation of data now once they have this data ready the next step that comes in on the, that is embeddings the hot cake right now when you talk about building large language model based solutions we call it embeddings right so let me write it little in big font size embeddings So now once they have the data okay they have the data with them now they have to create this embeddings okay on top of that right and that's where they used code gen okay and that code gen has been used here okay so let me just write code code gen has been used basically to create the embeddings so let me just write it over here create the embeddings so now the here is the data strategy so this was basically the data sets so let me just write data sets and now for data sets we have the embeddings part of it now create the embeddings using code gen if you are not familiar with code gen code gen has been used basically you know uh, so let me just write for code it has been the most used okay uh, model right now okay for synthesizing the programs it by salesforce and salesforce i think deserves a lot of credit i don't know people i don't see researchers talking about salesforce because they have done a lot of things for open source community okay they i think the model blip is also from salesforce okay let me just check it out okay the the blip model so i'm just writing blip by salesforce and it will show me if i'm wrong there okay so if it is it, it by sales yes it's by salesforce itself okay you can see salesforce blip bootstrapping language image pre training for unified vision language so blip is very very fundamental when you talk about you know uh uh vit based models right vision image transformer okay blip plays a huge role over there okay and that's again by salesforce salesforce has code gen and salesforce has other open source model and they deserve a lot of credit okay, that empowers the open source community and research like 51 for example so you know code 1 has been used to create the embeddings so you can also have a look at code gen i will give the link in the description guys okay so code gen now once we have the embeddings how would you find out that right this uh, embeddings kind of you know uh, like we have to predict the quality of each samples okay if the the quality is even good or you know, better or something right so you need a classifier now okay so they have used let me just write it over here they have used again uh, random forest so random forest classifier so 
So random forest classifier has been used. So now the, we have the data, the embeddings with the code gen, and now with the random forest classifier. Now what it does, okay, let me just write it over here. And basically classify, classifies, okay, classifies to basically classifies for quality of each sample, for quality of each sample. So quality of each sample. Now this is what it does. Okay. So now till now we have discussed about the process. So we have now the, the, the let me call it train five one five one training. So we start with the data set and then we move to embeddings using code gen. Now we we have this. So now what we will now discuss is in detail that how the training has been done, which is the novel approach. Okay, of uh, training these guys. Okay, so let me just give you you know a high level view of that and you can read the research paper and you can come up with your findings i have read it and you can see the model architecture and training so we'll now deep dive into it we'll understand what they are talking about mha which is multi-head attention flash attention implementation of multi-head what does it do do basically and what does the rotary, uh, rotary and position embeddings and this uh, MLP layers, what are they doing inside this? Okay, so we'll discuss about these things. You can read it over here, the pre-training and the fine-tuning, etc. etc. So let's understand. So you can see 51, 5 base, and 51 small. Three different types of weights. Okay, that they, they will I don't know if they will make it available for public. But that's okay, that's not our concern at this moment. And so I'm not going into the evaluation part. Now let's see. Okay, so I'll break it down. Okay, the model architecture and training. It's a decoder only transformer model. So let me write this guys. Okay, so let me write it for you. So it says decoder only transformer model using the flash attention. Very big, you know, this might sound very big words to you. Okay, but it's a very intuitive. Okay, so decoder only transformer VSP plus 17 model using the flash attention. Okay, uh, of multi-head attention, we also use MHA MLP layers in parallel configuration. Okay, following some recent models like CodeGen, Palm, and GPT Neo. Okay, uh, we also use rotary position embeddings with rotary dimension 32. Let's let's break it down. Okay, so I have done my study on it, and I will break it down and I will help you understand. Okay, and how? So let me first write it down. So that we'll start with tokenizer. Maybe in the very layman term, okay, the, the step goes like this. We have a tokenizer and then we, and we'll go into detail, okay, rotary position embedding. Let me first write all these terminologies, okay, rotary position embeddings and then we have flash attention. Then we have flash attention, then we have, you know, multi-head attention. So multi-head attention and then we have uh, parallel MHA and MLP so let me just write it as well here parallel MHA and MLP layers so I'm just going to write it down and decoder only transformers so I'll just write in a different color because that's how they define this model decoder only transformer So that's the step. Okay, so this is what we have. So we have tokenizer, rotary position, embeddings, flash attention, multi-head attention, parallel MHA and MLP layers, decoder only transformers. How can we explain this guys now? Okay. But before that, I will I'll also explain I, I think we I think you should know a little bit about the hyperparameters. Okay, and then we'll deep dive into you know uh, about this detail. So let me just uh, let me first explain you that. Okay. So the first is layers. The first thing is layers. How many layers? Okay, when we talk about uh, five one, okay, or five one small. So we'll talk about these two models. The one one is let me just write over here. So uh, let me just. So I'll just write one point three billion and three fifty m. Okay, and then we will put our hyperparameter over here okay 
So let's write now. So the first thing is layers. So the, on the layers part, okay, for 24 layers for 1.3, 1.3 which is 5, 1, and then 20 layers for 350M, M weights wala model. Okay, so 24 layers, 1.3B, and then 20 layers, 3.8. So basically, it's, it basically refers to the number of stacked transformers layers. So we have transformers layers. So the number of stacked transformers layers in the model. Okay, that's what it represents basically. Maybe I can write it down quickly. So, you know, uh, refers to, refers to the number of, you know, uh, stack transformer, stack transformer uh, layers in the model. So layers in the model. So the first part is layers. So we have we are currently looking at the hyperparameters and then we'll deep dive into the step to understand that which one has been used where okay and then we have something called hidden dimension now for 1.3b and 350 m so for 1.3b the hidden hidden dimension is around 2048 you can see it over here you see, if you see this it says hidden dimension of 2048 so let me just write it 2048 and for 350 it's 1024 okay now what does hidden dimension do guys it determines the size of the vector representation so we have vectors here we have embeddings now right so it basically determines the size of those okay so it determines determine the size of uh, vector representation in the model. So vector representations. Okay, let me just go back on the cast representations in the model. That's on the hidden dimension now. Now what else we have? We have MLP inner dimensions, the multi-layer perceptron. Okay, and that's inner dimension. So MLP inner dimensions. So for 1.3b and 350m, so for 1.3b it's 8192 and for 350m it's 4096. Now what does MLP inner dimensions means guys? It's basically size of you know intermediate layer within the multi-layer perceptron. So we have MLP is there, right? MLP component of this um, this model, the 51 model, because that if you see here, but if you go up, it says parallel M MHA and MLP layers. So there are MLP components, there are MHA components and for that MLP components we have inner dimensions of these MLP layers. Okay. So these are basically size of intermediate layers. Size of intermediate layer. Uh, intermediate layers within the MLP. So I'll just write within the within the MLP component of the model. Now the four is attention heads. Okay. Four is attention heads. Now in attention heads for 1.3b and let me also write 350m for 1.3b is 32 attention heads. 32 attention heads and now this attention heads will also have their dimension okay so 32 attention heads i'll just write h uh, with a dimension of with a dimension of 64 and for this 350 it's 16 attention so i'll just write 16 attention head with a dimension of 32 it's just half of it okay so basically you can just see right uh, on the on the weights that we are talking it basically it's half of its uh, values there now we have sequence length so what does what do we mean by sequence length it basically it's fixed at 2048 it's, it's fixed 
and it is nothing but the maximum number of tokens we are talking about you know when the gpt 3.5 3 it was around 4096 it alert was 2048 or something then it increased to 4096 and gpt 4 can also take around i don't know it's in more than 10000 if i am not wrong let me know okay how much token it can take so maximum number of token the model can process in a given code snippet so you are writing a code snippet right it's the length of the code that we are talking the maximum number of tokens okay so unique tokens by the way okay so maximum number of tokens no it's not unique tokens unique tokens in the training process but when you are uh, making the request so model can generate some code or output for you then it doesn't look at the unique tokens the so maximum number of tokens can be 2048 when you talk about 51 and the last thing is the objective so what is the objective of this model okay the objective is very simple predict the next sequence based on the preceding tokens that's the simple you know uh, objective so next token prediction this is the next token prediction that we are talking about so if you see this so this is the objective of the model so pre predicts the next token in the you know code sequence given the preceding tokens so these are the hyper parameter for this model so sequence length objective attention heads mlp inner dimensions hidden dimensions and layers okay this, and these are these are the steps in the training process tokenizer i don't know if i should explain you because it might be very lengthy if i explain okay let me watch very quickly okay so what do we what do we mean by tokenizer so for example let me just do here so when i write for i in range so i'll, I'll write write something for you guys so for i in range and i write something like this if this is my basically the code snippet okay example okay so how does tokenizer basically breaks it so basically it breaks it into tokens and for this case the token will be you know like for and next token will be i the next token will be in the next token will be in range something like this right and the next token will be this excuse me and this next token will be this parenthesis and then five so every token that you see, right, basically breaks into the token. That's, a, that's the first step, tokenization, okay, the tokenizer. But rotary position embeddings is, you know, is very, very intuitive to understand, guys. Rotary position embeddings. So it basically helps the model understand rotary position embeddings. You can see the position, right? It basically helps the model to understand the position of the variable. That's what it does. Okay, so for example, if I write here, of a code snippet so let me just write so i'm writing define so basically defining a function in python so define basically calculate so let me just write define and calculate underscore number or num and i'll just put it over something like or let's keep it like this you know number i'll just put something x over here okay calculate number x or calculates whatever it is okay the code snippet now what it does guys okay model to understand the variable num okay uh, the variable x by the way sorry the variable x so positioning of positioning of variable x that's that's how we do rotary position embedding but it's a very uh, complex topic uh, to be honest when you talk about a rotary position embedding because they use kind of some kind of uh, trigonometric function there are a lot of things goes up you know behind hood of rotary position embeddings let me know if you want me to have a video on this step subsequently right or i don't know if i can cover it in one video right uh, it might be long so uh, for this step uh, rotary position embeddings of flash attention i can have a separate video let me know your views guys if you are interested if you if i get some good uh, you know feedback or some appreciation on this video i might create a video for you guys on explaining in detail with some examples and in a very layman terms like what we mean by rotary position embeddings and flash attention for example so let's let's understand the flash attention very quickly okay before moving to other guys here okay the multi head and parallel image here so for, let's take an example so flash attention so i'll take an example if so if x greater than 10 if this is my code base okay if x greater than 10 put some result or something okay now you have some result it can be you can just write x multiply 2 or something so it model to focus on the uh, uh, comparison operator 
so we have this operator here okay this this comparison operator so basically flash attention what it does and the multiplication operation so whatever operation that we have so you see this multiplication operator so i'll just write multiplication operator and then we have comparison operator it focuses on uh, this operation when predicting the next part of the code so it also predicts the next part of the code as well so it it basically modifies the attention mechanism guys you know uh, to improve efficiency and accuracy so mathematically it adjusts the uh, weighting and importance of different tokens in the input that we are giving okay and enhancing the model's ability to focus on a specific code elements so like for example in this operator in this case right it focuses on this and then it looks at what kind of sequence it can generate okay and then we have multi-head attention which you now up to uh, uh, split into the multiple subspaces and I think it will get bigger guys so what I will do you know uh, let me know your views on this because I don't want to go deep dive that technical of taking examples and talking about it so but these are the steps tokenizer rotary position embeddings flash attention multi-head attention parallel MHA and MLP layers okay and uh, and these are the hyperparameter that we discussed right layers hidden dimensions MLP inner dimensions etc. what I will do I'll give you this in the description guys the screen graph 5 1 by Microsoft okay uh, but it's very very interesting paper that they have published the research paper okay and I'll, I'll i'll recommend everyone to read this research paper and come up with your findings and let me know your findings on uh, this paper 5.1 because i really liked it and i'm still doing my study on this paper because i am also working on similar lines in some of the research areas and i know this video might have <laughs> gone a little longer okay uh, I was not expecting that to be too long. I just wanted to cover on a very high level overview, but I went technical and I still haven't completed all the things if you see it over here. Okay, I, I think I haven't completed multi-head attention and parallel MHA and, and, and those things. So, uh, decode, I just I just give you decoder only transformer uh, overview because 5.1 is a decoder only transformer. I think you can see it on screen, yes. Decoder only transformer. So basically, you know it uses self attention mechanisms okay uh, layer normalization feed forward network it's a combination of different techniques and and other mathematical operations basically to process the input code sequentially it only looks at the input code sequentially okay and it and it utilizes uh, matrix operations etc uh, to generate coherent and con very context appropriate code snippets in this case of 5.1 okay it's only decoder only because when you talk about other models we have we have talked about both encoder and decoder model that's what it does guys okay so yeah so this is what i wanted to create i wanted to create a long video i wanted to cover it theoretically that how how different approach if you see the data strategy that how they have worked with pre-training on code textbook and fine-tuning on code exercises different combination sources synthetic samples stack overflow and stack and taking a small python code sample then working on with embeddings with code gen then random forest classifier and the, this steps tokenizer rotary position embeddings flash attention multi-head attention parallel mha and mlp layers and how the hyperparameters that have been you know considered to train the model it's very interesting right so i'll give this in the description and paper you would have of course great from internet but i will give it anyway in the description as well textbooks are all you need uh, it's one of the most fascinating model of the last week i will say because every week you can see the models are being released and so i hope you you know uh, like the video it have it might be too verbose for you for example if you are not that research focused uh, but please excuse me on that one because i wanted to create a, a research focused video how how to basically think you know when we want to train uh, some language models how differently you know you can we can write some research papers in these areas when we talk about generative AI or large language models uh, maybe there are different topics that I'm also exploring if you want to collaborate on writing research papers or participating in some research 
you know you can reach out to me you know and and we can see what we can do in our personal capacity so you know that's all uh for this video guys you know if you uh like the video or the content that i create okay uh please uh consider subscribing it okay and if you haven't uh share the video and channel with your uh, friends guides please do that uh consider sharing it with your friends if you haven't done it yet and in your circle or peer or network please do that uh we'll create uh more such contents i'm working on some projects that are in the upcoming video you will see some end to end projects like ticketing system using agile tools and using open ai apis or azure open ai something and also on some open source rlms but the performance are very bad when you talk about open source rlms they are too opaque and they too much uh you know problem of hallucination but there are techniques like vector has cracked grounded generation technique to control hallucination how we can come up with different injection technique to control hallucination some better validation you know on the hallucination part so working on those kind of things so please consider subscribing and uh, please share your thoughts and feedback in the comment box guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next one